Welcome back to Small Caps. And if you don't know by now, you haven't been watching, my name's Kerry Stevenson. And today I'm speaking with Zef Reeves. He's the Managing Director of Tesoro Resources. ASX code is TSO. Now, some of you are not paying attention, ladies and gentlemen, because Tesoro Resources, they've got the El Zorro Gold Project over in Chile. And we're going to ask Zef a couple of questions about what's going on over there. But here's the thing. The more they drill the bigger this little monster gets. And I think it's been flying a little bit under the radar. So as usual, I go out and I find some interesting stories for you guys. And Zef's joining me today because we want the update. Zef, g'day, how are you? Hi, Gary. I'm well, thank you. Happy New Year. Oh, Happy, happy New Year, year to all your well, listeners. I, I think it's a Happy New Year. We're still in January. Uh, you're Fingers still behind crossed. the Iron Curtain, mate. Yeah, not for long, though. So we'll see what happens. Uh, February 5, they uh, drop the barrier. So we'll see how we go. Drop the barrier and see who's first out of the gates. Well, Zef, I really appreciate your time. Uh, Locks going on with Tesoro Resources. Um, I mentioned to our listeners, it's the El Zorro Gold Project, and you've been doing some drilling. So let's start with the a bit of an update, because a lot of people know Tesoro Resources. You've got the project. Brief overview, and then what you've been doing coming into this new year and what you're seeing? Yeah, so uh, obviously it was a busy year last year. We had our maiden resource, which we announced, which was reasonably modest, a 660,000-ounce uh, maiden resource. But really the key focus for the company has been to expand that resource um, over the last six months of the year and, and still going into this year, uh, continue to pump out some pretty exceptional drill results and um well, tell us some of those. Tell us some of those, Zef. What are some of those exceptional drill results that you're seeing? Uh, oh. Typically, you know, off the top of my head, I don't have them right in front of me at the moment, but, you know, we consistently see results out of um, this ore body, which are, you know, close to 100 metres at one to one and a half grams with high-grade portions, which I think is really important to, to um, for listeners to appreciate is that, Within those wide zones, there's really good high grade. So I'm talking 20 to 30 metres wide, at sort of four to six gram material um, over big distances. The things, you know, the main part of the ore bodies um, continuously mineralised over 500 metres of width, but it's now 1.2, 1.3 kilometres long. We drilled it down to 500 metres. Um, and that just the more we drill it, the bigger it gets. So... And, you know, not only that, all the other work that we've been doing, so we've got detailed metallurgical test works being completed on that, which we announced late last year. Um, we've got, you know, if you want to put a deposit somewhere that's got a high chance of being mined due to supporting infrastructure, El Zorro is it, you know, we're 50 k's away from a port, we're close to roads, we've got power options to, to look at, um, we've got water from the ocean for processing. So it ticks all those boxes and the more work that we're doing to this, um, the more risk is taken away, yeah. I guess, and um, the more chance we see this of, of being, um, you know, becoming a production and development story fairly quickly. So really the focus is to get critical mass on the resource and then we'll just push on, you know, it's a fairly linear pathway for us. Um, you, you mentioned uh, risk around the project. I want to just look at that a little bit. It has got a good infrastructure. It is in a good location. Um, what are you doing coming into 2022 to, I guess, further de-risk the project? It's a big resource now, as you said. It's uh, 500 metres wide, you know, 500 Yeah, metres. so it's going to be, a, you know, a decent-sized hole in the ground and you've got to put infrastructure on the, on the surface, obviously. You've built a plant and offices and all those things that can support a mining operation. Probably, you know, the biggest impact is things like um, waste dumps and tailings dams and things like that. So, you know, part of that um, risk assessment is, is doing all your environmental studies and getting things ready to be permitted. So we've started that work. That's okay. underway. Um, we're probably midway through getting a permit to access the ocean for seawater to pump up for the project to, to put in the plant for processing. Um, so all those things are, are completely achievable in this part of the world. Um, it's in Region 3 in Chile, which is a mining-dominated region. And so, you know, the conversations that we have with the directors of the Mines Department in Copiapo, which is a regional city, is uh, when are you guys going to start building your mine? And, um, well, that's, po that's very positive. 
and, and employ some more people in our region. So the very supportive environment to, to, um, to build a mine. Um, so I think really the real risk is, um, you know, financial risks around resource size and, I guess, gold price and, you know, um, access to funding to build it and those sorts of things. But I think, um, you know, some of the preliminary work that we're doing at the moment, looking at the um, potential economics of something in this part of the world, you know, it looks fairly attractive from an open pit perspective. And given the scale and geometry and nature of the ore body, um, it certainly lends itself to some pretty low-cost open pit mining. I want to come back to the resource in a moment, but you did mention um, the, the lo- you know, employing locals and the mines department very supportive. But recently Chile's had a new government in place and there has been a little bit of talk, uh, I guess, in the, in the media about the fact that there could be an increase in taxes, could make things a little bit uneconomic. Um, what are you seeing? Yeah, look, I think... Um you know, the information that we've gotten from, you know, general observation is is two things. One is the Western media and particularly some of the mining publications are sensationalist in their assessment of the proposed, of, you know, proposed legislative change regarding taxes. Um, I really don't think that anything is going to change and the advice that we have is not much is going to change. And the main reason being is there has been a change in government. There's a new president. Yep. Um, they're so, it's the socialist side or the left side of politics, but the Senate's still controlled by the conservative side of politics. So, you know, they have to get that legislation, any legislation through um, through that Senate. And uh, so we don't envisage there's going to be any major legislative changes or taxation changes or anything like that in this period of government. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's been a lot of money thrown around because there's a pandemic on, like every other government on the planet. The yeah. government's been pumping a lot of money into their economy. So, um, you know, if they take away the incentive for investment into their mining industry and their agricultural industry, then it's only going to be a decline in GDP and, and jobs and all the other things that go with that. So I really don't think there's going to be any major changes um, in Chile regarding taxation and um, keeping in mind that Chile is the biggest copper producer in the world and probably the, the biggest copper company is the Chilean-owned Cadelco Mining and um, governments usually loathe to tax themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And I loved what you just said before is it's sensationalism. That's what it is, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to be on the ground like Zef is and understanding and having those connections to get the true story. So I'm really pleased that we covered that off, actually, Zef. So Thanks for clearing that up. Now, you talked before about your maiden resource, just over 600,000 ounces. Uh, when are you going to give us a resource upgrade? What's what's the time frame of that? Yeah, look, it'll be in the not too distant future, exact timing we're not sure on. Um, you know, we're drilling holes. We've got a lot of gold in and we'd like to get those into the next <laughs> resource. So uh, I think we've drilled um, overnight to the to last night our time, I think they collared the 288th hole into the deposit and that 666,000 ounce resource that we announced last year only used 140 holes. So there's a lot of data to still get into an updated resource and we're finding some um, really impressive extensions to the oil body. And and probably another important thing that um, we've done with our ongoing modelling is uh, we found some, I guess you could call them holes in that maiden resource. Um, They simply didn't have much data in them. And so we've been targeting those areas because they're they're really valuable. They're like low-hanging fruit of ounces, if you like, because they sit in the existing pit shells. Um, All they do by adding, turning that material into ore is reduce stripping ratios and, um, again, make our computer mining look fairly attractive. So... We're, we're targeting in on a lot of those areas as well. We're starting to see some of those results come through. Um, now, uh, most recent drilling announcement, there was a few holes from um, that were sort of targeting those areas and, you know, they're converting little skinny bits of mineralisation in that maiden resource to big fat bits of mineralisation in the, the potential new resource. So 
you know, really the focus is to, to get it to a critical scale or critical mass where, um, you know, we can wrap some scoping economics around it. We've got that yep. network now that we can plug into a scoping study report. Um, and it's just a matter of, you know, getting enough material into a suitable classification that we can use to start to demonstrate to the market, you know, this is the real deal. Um, you know, internally we're pretty pleased the way things are going and um, so it's just a matter of, you know, getting enough drill data that um, to, to be able to, to get that resource out. So... Is that is that I, drill, sorry to interrupt you, Zeph, but that drill data and the turnaround is it is there a is there a lag or is it pretty quick on the we, turnaround? We saw some lag. We saw quite a big lag at the back end of last year, hmm. um, and we've you know been working fairly closely with our um, SA lab in Santiago and um, to you know, understand how we can help them and. Uh, so we put a number of things in place towards the back end of last year and we're starting to see that come through okay. now. So we're seeing results come through more quickly. But, but one of the biggest issues that we have is simply that um, getting drill holes in the ground So because um, we've utilised diamond drilling for the entire program. So something that we're just working through now is actually getting some um, RC drilling done to, to do, I guess, more of the mine planning type drilling over some of the shallow parts of the deposit where you might start an open pit and that'll um, advance more quickly because one RC we could potentially do 4,000 metres a month, whereas we're sort of chugging away at 4,000 metres a month with the diamond drilling between a number of rigs at the moment. Are you going to be expanding? Like, let's talk expo because I've got a visual now, Zef. I've got a visual of this very big, large hole that's quite well mineralised and, as you said before, um, some of it is, you know, about one, one, one and a half, but you've got this um, richer dirt, I guess you call it, um, in and around those things. But let's talk how much longer, what are we looking at in 2022? Are you going to be drilling and drilling and drilling or do you think that, uh, just give me some timelines of what. Yeah, look, I don't think we'll stop drilling and for a couple of reasons. One, we'll keep growing it obviously through the year. Um, yep. You know, we really think that there's potential for a material step change in the size of, of the ultimate final mine. But um, so I don't think we'll stop drilling from that perspective. And we've also got a lot of drilling to do for um, converting, you know, inferred and indicated resources into measured resources for feasibility and so on. Um, one of the issues that we potentially have um, will be sterilisation drilling of areas that you want to go and put infrastructure and waste dumps on because every time the engineers look at an area that has potential, the GAs tell them that it's got gold in it. So, <laughs> um, so oh, and what I, a terrible I, position to be in, Zeph. And I suppose that segues into, you know, our outlook, I guess, for the project as a whole you know, on an emerging new gold district. Um, you know, when we first got to um, to Nero, to Alzoro, um, in 2017 as a private company, that was the only known place where the rocks occurred that hosts the majority of the gold at, at Alzoro. Um, since we've been there, we've now expanded that into this quite a large footprint where we found the intrusions that host the gold. Um, we've got anomalous gold throughout those intrusions, so... Um, you know, we've mapped to over five kilometres north of the deposit. They're continuous. They go north. They actually go west and northwest another four or five kilometres as well. Um, so the, the exploration and geology team are, are working hard to delineate other areas that are prospective. And we had some initial drill results off a couple of those targets recently, Drain Hill and Toro Blanco and all yes. those yeah. Those results weren't spectacular by any stretch of the imagination to what we normally see out of Tenera. Um, every hole still hit something. They all had a sniff and some of them had, you know, some reasonable results out of. And what it's telling us is that those intrusive rocks are fertile. They've got gold in them. And now it's just a matter of bringing in those other ingredients, I guess, which cause all bodies to form at our Zorro. Uh, yeah. And we, we obviously got a fantastic proxy sitting in the middle of it all, which is the Tanera gold deposit. So, um, you know, our exploration team, keep hinting to me that uh, they think that Tenera might only be the edge of something, not well. the main deal. So, you know, we need to, um, you know, just 
systematically get through the work that needs to be done to sort of assess the broader district. But certainly it, everywhere that we look and we see those rocks and we see those um, veins and faults that cross-cut them, they're mineralised, they've got gold in them. So it's a, a big, big gold system. Um, plenty of opportunity for further growth um, outside of Tanera. And you've got Tanera sitting in the middle of it, which is open in all directions as well. And as I said, the more we drill it, the bigger it gets. So, you know, it's a pretty exciting gold project. I've never been involved with anything like it um, before in my career because these things always sort of have an edge or an end. Geology changes and um, there's no more gold in those rocks over there, whereas... The, this the just keeps looking, going. Yeah, the more we're looking, the more we're, we're, we're finding and the more prospectivity increases. So, you know, we're, we're very excited about, um, you know, looking in the, I guess, broader district in that large tenement package that we hold. Well, we've got a, a, an investor audience listening to us, Zef, as you know, uh, quite a big investor audience. Your share price has been a little bit on the nose uh, in the past year. Do you think the market... First of all, are they worried that it's chilly or uh, do they not understand fully what this is? And, and that's what I want to unpack today because it's not that complicated. And no, and it's not that complicated. And, um, you know, one of our other directors, Linton Putland, who came on board last year is, and he's running all of our mining studies and everything. He's a mining engineer and he's rubbing his hands together because he thinks it's the simplest Gold project is just yeah. about ever saying, you know, the Met's fantastic, which offers massive advantages. It's an easy open pit. It's got all, you know, you're not constrained by anything in particular. So um, very straightforward. And I think potentially one thing that the market struggled with initially would be um, that initial resource size and perhaps the grade. But I think over the course of the year, we've demonstrated that, that resource grade certainly got, uh, resource size has got the potential to be, you know, significant enough to make the, um, you know, what we're striving to achieve, which is, you know, ultimately a, a approximately 100,000 ounce per annum open pit type scenario. So we need to get enough resource in the ground that could support that. Um, and I think that the constant drill results that we've knocked out, you know, one after the other after the other, and you can only make centuries for so long before somebody selects you in the Australian side. So, um, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so um, I think, you know, the market's probably, um, well, parts of the market are certainly starting to take notice that, um, you know, there certainly is the um, reality that there's a significant resource there. And also we've probably put a bit more emphasis around those high grade portions of the drill results, because we see those as really big parts of the economic drivers for this project. They are really good sweet spots and they're big, you know, so they're, yeah. they're wide and there's a number of them and they're over a significant strike length. And we see them as forming, I guess, the, the real guts of, of the mining operation here. So, um, and we're consi consistently producing them. So I think the market started to take notice of that and starting to actually say, you know, Every time you guys step out and do extension holes, we've drilled holes that are sitting two, 300 metres north and south of the resource now that have hit pretty decent mineralisation, so we've got to infill all that. Um, you know, you can draw your own conclusions and start to give it some credence. You know, South America, perhaps we get a bit of a discount for being there as well. I guess if this was sitting out near Kalgoorlie in the eastern goldfield somewhere, the market cap of the company would be substantially higher, but I'd argue that Chile is a better place to... Go and build a mine, and particularly in this part of Chile. And um, I think you answered. Really I think you answered it earlier when we were chatting. When you said, "Listen, there is a new government," um, and I think you explained it very well. That um, I guess the uh, that that government's not going to turn around and make this uneconomic because they understand that they've got to give jobs, and mining is a big part. Mining and ag, like Australia, it's a big part of the Chilean. Economy. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, where, the, where is the government going to get its money from? It's going to get it from taxation, but it's not going to get it from increasing the tax rates on the two biggest industries in the country, which are mining and agriculture. Um, and there's a lot of free trade agreements in place, which are set in stone in Chile. So, you know, it really limits the scope, I guess, that any government's got to do any major change in regard to attracting foreign investment and all those sorts of things. 
And, you know, keeping in mind we're a gold company and it's a gold deposit and the post-taxation changes were only applicable to the copper industry at this stage. So, um, you know, we see that there's strong support for another project in Region 3 where we are um, from the government. And I think I mentioned before we had regular discussions with the Director of Mines for that region and all he wants to know is when are you guys going to start building a mine so we can get another workforce employed um, in our region. Okay, we're running out of time. There's a couple of things I want to ask you before we finish up. Um, Zef, um, just give our listeners a little bit of an idea of what they can expect from a news flow point of view in 2022. We're, cut, we're January now. Just give us an idea of what 2022 is going to bring. And then I'm going to ask you three reasons why they should be looking at Cesaro right now. So first up, what are they going to expect in 2022? Yeah, so obviously we're you know, full, fully into drilling, so we'll continue to knock out plenty of drill results, and I anticipate that drilling will continue throughout the year. Um, we'll get a, a very major resource upgrade out um, in the coming months. The exact timing of that will be dependent on, I guess, when we decide to stop and put a number on the table. Uh, and probably in fairly short order, we'll, we'll have a, a scoping study out demonstrating the economics of a deposit in this part of the world um, of, you know, Tenera's size and grade. Um, and that, that'll move fairly quickly through into feasibility studies um, throughout the rest of the year. So, you know, it's a very simple story. It's a pretty straight line trajectory for us. Um, there's nothing fancy or complicated about this project. Um, it just comes down to resource size, getting it drilled out, getting it permitted and building a mine. Righto. So give me the three reasons. That that audience out there, that investor audience that's watching us today, three reasons why they should be sitting up and taking notes. Well, I've already got them in my head, but I better let you tell them. Well, I think if people want to invest in a company that um, has been doing what it said it would do for over 18 months now, then... Um, Tesoro is probably here. We haven't missed a beat despite the pandemic. Um, we'll continue to do that. So, um, and we really think, I think, you know, the main reason that you'd want to invest in Tesoro is that this project that Tesoro has at Al Zorro really does have a, a good probability of becoming a, um, a major gold mine in Chile. So, you know, that's really the main reason you'd want to be investing in Tesoro if you want to invest in a future gold mine. Love that. And as we said at the start, the more they drill, the bigger it gets, but it isn't complicated. And as Zef said earlier, the, the government is fully supportive. It's a nice, simple, open pit. It's going to potentially get to a mine. But right now, I think it's been flying a, l- a lot under the radar in 2021. So sit up and take notice. Do your own research. ASX code is TSO. Zef Reeves, thanks for joining me on Small Caps today. Cheers, Kerry. Great to chat today.